Imagine a world where animals are raised for human organs, not for meat. Let's explore. With an increase in lifestyle diseases, there's a corresponding increase in demand for human organs, especially kidney. Let's take the case of India. Lancet, a reputed journal, notes that India sees 17,000 to 18,000 solid organ transplants performed every year, the most in the world after US and China. The most transplanted organ in India is the kidney. But the current number of transplantations, that is 11,243, is insufficient to meet the demand of an estimated 200,000 renal failures a year. Therefore, the waiting list for organs is huge. And if I go by recent Government of India data, it says that almost a waiting list includes almost 500,000 people. The issue of organ need is so grave in our country. Just look at the numbers. According to recent estimates, almost 500,000 people need organs in our country. And it's not the need, we need donors also. And precisely to Handle this issue, Government of India last year in 2023 started something called Angadan Mahotsav, encouraged um, uh, donating organs. Very recently in April 2024, Government of India started something called National Digital Database just to keep a database of all the donors so that the demand and the need for organs are met in our country. True, these are staggering numbers. And these numbers are not only in India, all over the world it's the same situation. There's a huge demand for organs. And medical science, the scientists, the pharma industry, they're all looking to find solutions. One solution can be mechanical devices. The other solution can be tissue engineering. And now third solution can be uh, growing human organs in animals and later transplanting them. And that's called xenotransplant. The world's interest in xenotransplant increased since January 2021, when the first transgenic pig heart transplantation in human history was completed by the Medical Center of the University of Maryland in the US. In today's episode, I'll be exploring ethical issues that surround xenotransplantation, the values that are at stake, and lastly, the social and public health challenges. Speaking of xenotransplantation and the ethical issues that surround it, let me begin by explaining what does xenotransplant mean exactly. Xenotransplantation refers to any procedure that involves the transplantation, implantation or infusion into a human recipient of live cells, tissues or organs from a non-human animal source. This is according to Diction Encyclopedia of Applied Ethics. In simple words, xenotransplant refers to cross-species transplantation. And uh, this is an emerging area in bioethics, which happens to be applied ethics area. Let's explore it further. Oh, I didn't tell you the reason why we're exploring xenotransplant today. The reason we are exploring is because on May 11th, this May 11, 2024, the first human recipient of pig's kidney passed away. That's why we're exploring it. And his passing away again highlights the number of ethical issues that are connected to xenotransplant. Let me identify those issues one by one. The ethical questions that xenotransplant raises are the following. Firstly, the big question is, is it morally acceptable or morally necessary to kill an animal for human purpose? That's the first question. Second question, and my favorite one is, is it morally acceptable to genetically modify animals? Remember the word is, is it acceptable to genetically modify animals? Big question. The first big issue that xenotransplant raises is, is it morally justified to kill an animal for human purpose? In other words, is it justified to kill a pig for a human purpose? The advocates of xenotransplants point out, or the supporters of xenotransplant point out, that it's perfectly justified as long as you sacrifice a pig or you sacrifice an animal to save a human life, it's perfectly justified. So the question here is, if it saves life, it's justified. Just imagine a xenotransplant going wrong. 
it does not save life the person loses life the pig also lost its life the animals also lo lost its life so animal sacrifice gone waste so how can you justify that so there are a lot of pros and cons on this question in fact a lot of xenotransplant advocates point out when it's okay to kill a pig or it's okay to kill animals for culinary reasons for meat purposes then why not for medical purposes Let's leave the killing, the debate on killing animals for human purposes aside. Let's come down to the next big question. And this is my favorite question. And the question is, do you think it's okay to genetically modify an animal? Or in other words, genetically modify a pig to grow a human kidney? Now, what is shocking here is you're growing an animal by modifying the animal or in other words, genetically programming the animal in such a way. It's not exactly the animal. It's something else. Just imagine a pig growing up in a manner that it's growing human kidney inside, not a pig's kidney, it's a human kidney. So it's not exactly a pig. At the same time, it's not exactly a human being. So is it ethically correct? The lot of ethicists like Tom Regan, they approach the issue with the value of dignity. What they say is the moment you genetically modify an animal, you kill or you destroy the inherent value or dignity of the animal. And how do you do it is, you are programming the animal just as a means, just as an instrument. So you are violating the basic, uh, basic moral status of these animals. You cannot use life like this. You cannot use life as a means to an end. Does it remind you of Kant, human dignity? So recent human rights, sorry, recent animal rights activists talk about the same. You cannot use animals as means to a human end. From an inherent value perspective, modifying animals genetically is ethically unacceptable. Let's take consequentialists. Consequentialists have a little different perspective. They're okay with the modification provided you don't make the animals suffer. That is the process of modification that should not lead to animal suffering. I want you all to look at the screen carefully. Now, when you look at the screen, what do you see? Do you see a mouse or not? Yes, I can see that a lot of you are saying it looks like a mouse. But the point is, look at it very carefully. Does it look like a mouse? No, it's not. It's a genetically programmed mouse to grow human ear on its back. If you look at the image carefully, you will see a human ear growing on the mouse's back. So the mouse is not exactly a mouse. At the same time, it's not exactly a human being also. What is it? It's a massive identity issue. It's the same issue that crops up with humans also. The moment a human being receives a pig's kidney, it's a non-human organ inside one's body. Studies have shown that people who received non-human organs have this big identity issue also. Let me give you a situation. Just imagine a person receives a kidney from a pig and the transplantation is done. As the person is recovering, the recipient has a non-human organ in his body. Now, there's a possibility that when he received that non-human organ, he also unknowingly, unconsciously received, his body received pathogens or microorganisms from the pig. So who knows the recipient may be carrying infections from the pig. And once he recovers, there's a possibility, once he recovers and starts moving in wider public, when he starts interacting with people around, who knows, he may pass on infection that he picked up from non-human organ. So there's always a possibility, there's always a risk of pathogens jumping from animals to humans this way. So it can lead to a big public health issue. That risk also has to be managed. Besides the public health issue, there's one more issue connected to xenotransplant, especially involving pigs. There are a lot of religions that consider pigs as ritually unclean. So there is an issue of religion and social acceptance also. 
let me close the discussion by bringing in two contemporary philosophers to understand what's their take on xenotransplantation, this emerging technology. On one side is Peter Singer, a utilitarian. On the other side is Christine Koskar, a deontologist. Let's start with Peter Singer. Peter Singer, a philosopher and a leading figure in animal rights movement. He's very cautiously supportive of, I repeat, cautiously supportive of xenotransplants. And his idea is to maximize welfare for both humans and animals. Singer's support for xenotransplant comes with a small advice. What Singer points out is, it's perfectly fine use animals. But the problem is you should not make the pig suffer. When you're rearing animals for organ transplant, please don't make them suffer. He believed in humane treatment of animals. He said the physiological, psychological needs of the animal should be taken care of. Christine Koskard, a Harvard philosopher, is the exact opposite of Peter Singer. Following Kant's footsteps, she advocated treating animals as rational beings. She was of the, she's of the opinion that animals should also be treated as rational beings and as rational beings, they must be treated as end in themselves. In other words, what she advocates is, you have no right, that is we humans have no right to treat animals as means because they're ends in themselves. So by following Kant's footsteps, She's a strict non-supporter of xenotransplant. What she's trying to say is, the moment you use animals as means, you're violating the inherent value. In fact, she gives a very powerful analogy. And the analogy goes somewhat like this. Women don't exist to make homes for men. People of color don't exist to provide cheap labor for white people. Animals don't exist to provide food, labor, and organs for people. The debate between Singer and Cosgard highlights the complex issues, complex ethical issues involved in uh, xenotransplantation. It's an emerging technology, rife with ethical challenges. But whatever it is, we have to keep a couple of factors in mind. Before the technology becomes more popular, we have to understand the ethical implications of it the public health risk that comes attached with it, and the social sentiments that need to be respected. So with this, we end today's session. Happy learning.